Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and today I have something rather different for you. It's a brand new game. It is coming out on Steam on the 31st of January 2023. So just a few days away from the time I am recording this. This is an interesting title. First off, as you can see from the trailer running beneath me at the moment, it's from Microprose. Wow, I thought when I saw that name, where have they been? A, a games company from my youth, creating many legendary titles, or at least responsible for many legendary titles. They went through the ringer a bit uh, through the decades, the 90s and into the early 2000s, I think. Um, and they eventually ground to a halt and disappeared. But the name, the logo... And many of the titles have now been purchased. The intellectual property, as they call it, has been purchased by a team of enthusiastic Australians who are recreating many of the great titles, not just rebuilding old titles, but sort of reimagining them as this is here, Second Front, a uh, tactical turn-based war game. Now, when the team from Microprose got in touch with me, uh, and I do have to give them a huge thank you for offering me a key to have a look at this game and introduce it to you. See if it's the sort of thing you would like to see on the channel or indeed just play for yourself, regardless of, of my ability or not to play it. Those sort of things appeal to me. So I thought, oh, this could be right up my street. Whether it appeals to you as watchers of the channel, I'm not entirely sure as yet. You will, I'm sure, let me know. So what is the game? It is called Second Front and it is a tactical World War II turn-based strategy game where you're not just playing the strategy of combat between two com competing armies you can actually create and this is a big thing about the game as the trailer has is highlighting as I'm sure you can see you can create your own maps and scenarios not just the 48 that come built into the game already so what does the game include it includes a 48 as already mentioned 48 epic scenarios from World War II, uh, featuring three armies at the moment, American, German and Russian. Uh, no British at the moment, but they may well appear as the game develops over time. But it also has an editor, so you can create and share through the workshop custom maps and scenarios, indeed complete campaigns. There are over 40 infantry units to command, 216 types of motorised vehicle and a very competitive AI, as we will see. Uh, in terms of the maps, there's all sorts of terrain types, uh, 300 terrain types, 148 types of destructible and flammable buildings, bridges, etc, etc. And they do plan, as they say, to add new features and content as it goes through following release on the 31st January 2023. But enough of me waffling. What's the game look like? This is the front screen. As you can see here from the main menu, editing maps, scenarios, campaigns are very much front and centre of this game. It's not just playing the battles themselves. And it's not just like we're going to add mod support just to sort of keep people happy and extend the replayability of the game. It is very much what this game is about. Seeing as the editing features are really sort of right up front in this menu, let's have a quick look at those before we actually get into actually playing battles. We will start with editing a map. I'm not going to do this because I'm not creative enough, but I'll show you what the options are. Now, there is one built into it uh, as an example, which is, in fact, one of the scenarios. So here's our map. We've got buildings. We've got hills. We've got uh, degraded territories. Uh, we've got... Uh, We've got obstructions, line of sight uh, type things we can deal with, hills and trees. Uh, we've got road bridges, all sorts of things we can build here. Decorations, facades of various buildings. You could add uh, elevation tools. You could do all sorts of things here. Now, I'm not sure of all the limitations of the map size and so on. If, if I can find out quickly if there are limitations about the map size, then I will annotate the video accordingly. But as you can see, you've got a whole raft of tools to play with to create your own maps in the game. And you can share all these on the workshop, if you so please. And following the map, 
Uh, you don't have to create your own map. Of course, you could use somebody else's map. But if you're creating your own map, you might want to build a scenario. Again, thankfully, so I can show you, there is a built-in scenario. So you start off work looking at the vehicles and the inf infantry that are available to the two sides. It's very much a two-sided battle on each of these battle sites. So we'll load this one. And here... It, these are this is the AI so it's placed down the German units where they're going to be and you can decide if you want to place any other vehicle in the uh, in that nation's armory as it will or any particular leaders or infantry uh, on the unit site that's the that's the German the Americans here we can place down. Ooh, what are these? Oh, these are all emplacements. They're, they're mortars and the like. Uh, tanks. We've got armoured vehicles. Uh, troop carriers. Uh, just lorries for hauling troops around the map. You can define the victory priorities. Uh, the properties of the map itself. Specials. Like uh, you can define incoming locations for reinforcements or exit or breakout points. So if it's like you have to get through the German lines, for example, and reach the next destination, uh, that will be a breakout or exit point. And again, the units from there. So you've got a vast array of tools at your disposal to create your own scenarios. Before we wrap up this little thing, let's have a look at the garage. Uh, this is the garage here. And here we can familiarise ourselves with all the vehicles that are available to us. So it gives you all the details here, all the information you could want here, telling you about uh, the accuracy, the armour. Uh, let's look at the Americans actually, shall we? What's an Amer impressive American tank? That looks quite impressive, doesn't it? Oh yeah, so you can see, you can compare and contrast here. You see all the details for it. I haven't read all the notes, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't tell you what all this means. Uh, so you've got uh, all that there. Oh, and you can say whether you want to add that or not. I'm not sure what all this does. I've not really played with this part of the game. So what we can do here as well is we can change the look of the thing. We can check out the look of the thing. So, for example, our crew at the moment is uh, is got the hatch open, so they can see what they're doing. You can see what it looks like with the hatch is closed. Oh, I can switch it round. Uh, what's that? Oh, I can move the machine gun. I can move the turret up and down the main gun. I can swing it round. I can put troops on the side. Uh, there we go. Uh, I've, I've no idea what I'm doing here, as you can see. Uh, oh, take the troops off. Yeah. And what's this do for me? Oh, that spins it round. Oh, that looks uncomfortable. I best take the troops off. Yes. <laughs> so you can really get to know all the vehicles in detail. So when you're building your own scenarios, your own campaigns, uh, you can exact. You can make sure you've got exactly the right vehicles you want to test. Uh, you or your friends or random strangers with within the game. Now I did say there that uh, I haven't understood all the icons and all the information that's available for all the vehicles, which is true. Now there is in-game help and we'll see that uh, when we get into playing the game itself. We will shortly, honest gov. Uh, but the, the game does come, and this is such <laughs> brings back such good feels from the old the old microprose days. There's a proper manual, and it comes if you just click on this button down here, manual. There is a link to it on the Steam forum as well if you want to to see it from there. So clicking on manual will open up in your preferred PDF reader the actual manual for the game. Uh, you can't see it because I haven't configured my recorder to show a second screen, so I'll pop this up here uh, as, as a simple image. Uh, so yes, it's a full 106 pages of manual, which gives you pretty much everything you need to know. And the game is quite involved. There is a lot of complexity to it. So reading the manual, I would seriously recommend because you're going to be presented with a lot of choices and a lot of information to make the most of the game. So if you want to play this game seriously, then I do heartily recommend checking out the manual. 
Uh, it's, it does cover a lot more than the in-game help does. Let's crack on and see about playing this game. It does come with a series of tutorials. They are all very basic. In a sense, they just teach you one thing at a time. So there's quite a few here. Now, this first one with the envelope, which is the in-game symbol, basically, for infantry. It teaches you all the things about how to defend, how to attack, how to, how to get troops to surrender, how to use machine guns, all that sort of stuff. There's also tutorials on armoured vehicles. Again, how to move them around and how to turn their turret round. So if not pointing in the right direction at the enemy, you can t turn the turret so you can fire at an enemy. And the difference between moving vehicles and stationary vehicles, which is apparently quite important. Uh, so move it, no moving and firing, stop and fire, and hidden units. Oh, they're a, oh, they're a pain. <laughs> Let me tell you that they are a pain. Let's have a quick poke at one of these, to be honest. So just show you how the tutorial works. So this is the, the basic description of what the tutorial will teach you. It shows you what the forces are. So you've got four tanks, the Germans got four tanks, and a description of what this tutorial will do. So if we just pop into this one, it's a very, very simple one, this. So it loads up. Again, it just reminds us what we are. These icons mean things like the amount of armament and the fatigue level of the two forces. With a nice oldie style typewriter introduction to where we're at. And here is the game map. Now this is a tutorial, so it gives you an instruction of what the lesson is supposed to be. So tanks that moved and stopped, they've not turned their engines off, so they're not stationary. They've just moved and come to a halt, ready to carry on moving. They will have a penalty in aiming and hitting targets. If you stop the tank, they will have a better accuracy. So continue that. Now, it's a slightly frustrating tutorial for me in that it's not on screen. It's not walking you through it. It describes what you need to do. So by this time, I've already forgotten what it what it told me I need to do. But you can, by hitting the, the light bulb up here, bring it back and remind yourself at any time. So we're going to move this tank. We can fire over there at this. So we right click on it to say I do want to target this, uh, this particular hex and choose which weapon we want to fire. So we've got a high explosive. We've got armor piercing. And here you can see all the details of the accuracy, the aiming, the likelihood of penetrating the armour or hitting a wall or any sort of obstruction and all these various icons which tell you the details, the likelihood, the probability of what's going to happen. So we will fire armour piercing at this tank and we hit the wall. Bother. This tank here we can't hit it just yet, but we can move it to the top of this hill and orient it in the way of the arrow. So I'll right click and say, yeah, we're going to move, move and stop. We're not going to do that because it's not the purpose of this tutorial. So I'll move you up. And here, if I were to fire over there, I can't because I'm not placed, I'm not facing that direction, but I could turn the turret. As you can see, the turret is turned. And as you can see here, the man, my men are out of the hatch. Now, unfortunately, there is no mouse rotation on here. You can use Q and E if you wish. Or you can use the icons up here to turn the map. Likewise. So let's uh, turn that back. Where are we? We're sort of, are we? Where are we? I'm lost. <laughs> so we're pointing at this tank again. So I can now fire at this tank. I'm going to fire here. And it looks like we've made no difference to them. So that's the basics of the tutorial. It takes you through and then you complete that and you aim to complete the victory goals here. And it tells you you've captured uh, whatever. This, this, uh, this doesn't work terribly well for this particular scenario, but it does tick off if you have to occupy buildings or capture locations or destroy so much of the enemy force. 
So that will kick up, click up, and once you come out of there, you'll get a scorecard for how well you do, which compares with other people in a similar uh, ability range playing the game on Steam. So let's come out of here and let's start a new game properly. Now I have played so far these first couple of scenarios in this campaign, which has unlocked these next two. So to unlock this one, I need to war win four American scenarios. And if I click that, it gives me a difficulty level of two stars. This looks very difficult, four stars. This one likewise for this one, two star. Uh, should we do them in order perhaps? So we'll click that. Uh, this looks like a very complicated map. The forces involved. Uh, I've got these uh, artillery units, I assume they are. <laughs> uh, infantry units, various leaders, all green troops, regular crew manning the guns, presumably, and some veteran troops. And the Germans have got, oh my goodness, lots of <laughs> yikes. Okay, so the description of this is the 5th Army has, a has had a relatively easy time pursuing retreating Wehrmacht troops north of Naples. However, Italy switched sides and the Germans had to occupy Italy with thousands of troops and Italian loyalists. All these units have been destined for the Eastern Front so that they were no doubt happy to be here in the Mediterranean theatre instead. When the Germans arrived in San Pietro, they did their utmost to form a defensive line. So I'm thinking my task is to punch through that defensive line. So let's see what happens when I play this. Uh, yeah, every match is pretty much on an equal here footing, fatigue and armour. So we'll continue this. We are near San Pietro in Italy. It's November the 5th, 1944. What have we got here? Uh, these are my guys here. Uh, they are carrying a bazooka, which I can drop, which I think makes them travel faster. Uh, I've got a Corporal Evans here who's in charge and three regular troops. Now at the moment, these guys are, oh, there's a tank hidden behind a wall. So he'll be more difficult to take out. These, this is hidden, so I don't know much about this unit. These are regular troops with a light machine gun. Over here we've got a, again, another regular unit with a light machine gun. And I've got here an armoured vehicle, which is carrying an uh, anti-aircraft machine gun and something else, presumably. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, can I? I can't fire at that, can I? No. But I can. If I put my guys. If I close the hatch. That uh, doesn't make much difference here. It, that can affect the accuracy uh, and the speed of travel uh, on some of the, the armoured vehicles. Uh, so let's uh, open that again, actually. Uh, so I can't do much here with that. So it's obviously out of range there. It's rather open. What might be nice would be to move it to here. Yeah, let's try that. We'll move that to there. And now I can fire at this tank. Excellent. Well, I can fire... Uh, HT, whatever that is, heat, high explosive armor, something or other, high explosive anti-tank, excellent, and that is just high explosive. So this one seems like the appropriate one to. Didn't do much damage. I didn't expect to click quite so quickly there. I should I should have paid more attention to what I was doing. I could fire my uh, anti. Aircraft, that's the anti-aircraft, anti-air machine gun. Oh, let's fire that. Nope, made no difference whatsoever. So that was a waste of a turn, basically, wasn't it? Uh, what can we do here? We've got our bazooka here. Now, what we can see here, we can either run or walk. And we're in open ground there. We're going to be within the line of sight of that uh, unit there. 
Now, if you want to check line of sight, there's a nice easy way to do it. There's an icon up here, the binoculars, and I can click on any location, any hex here, and it will show you what they can see. So this tank here can see all sorts of things over there up to that hedge, basically. And this guy here, or you can press F to do it. Press F. And yep, yeah, those highlighted areas are what they can see. So they can't see behind this hedge, but this guy can. Oh, the highlighted hexes mean something slightly different, I think. I can't remember. I, I think they, that's what they can fire into. I should have read the manual in more detail, perhaps. So if I press... Yeah, they can see all this. That's rather annoying, isn't it? I can fire at them, but I'm not don't have a very good chance of hitting them because I'm a little that's a little bit beyond my range. It's half of the maximum range, I think. What that icon is telling me. And I can't really move. I could no, I can't really move anywhere. So shall I try firing at it? I could do. And I missed. That was annoying, wasn't it? So this, oh, they've got machine guns. Now, machine guns have the chance of firing multiple times. Again, it doesn't, my odds there don't look terribly good. The double question mark, sorry, the double exclamation mark there you see in red is they're broken, which means they are not of no use thereafter. They, they'll, they'll be out of use for the next turn, though they might rally in the turn after that. The yellow exclamation mark means they're pinned down, which means I think they can't move. Uh, so I could do this. And this does tell you no grain in the way, stone building, which is excellent cover. What we'll do, actually, let's take just this one guy. I want to move... Oh, you're going to be uh, over there. Okay, let's walk over there, see what happens. Yeah, uh, no, I've lost a guy. So what's... Yeah, it looks like the machine gun has been left. Uh, my guy has been killed. That's rather annoying, isn't it? Okay, so we've got these uh, regular guys here. I could move there, but I'm going to be in the line of fire. Okay, let's fire this machine gun. And missing. The trouble is they are well protected by that stone building. Ooh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, this crew here. What have you got? Oh, you've got mortars. Where can I move you? I can't move you into the trees. Let's move one of you. No, not there. Uh, let's move one of you to here. So if I walk there... Uh, oh, someone spotted me. Those guys there, presumably. Can I fire? I think it's too far out of range. Uh, okay, let's move you to just one of you onto the bridge. We'll crawl onto the bridge. Again, they were fired upon there, but everything is out of range. Can I get you over here? I could actually. Now, if you run in one turn, you can't run again in the next turn. Who fired at me? Someone fired at me. However, that they didn't hit me, and I've been toughened up, I think. That's what that meant, I think. So, oh, we've moved all three of those now, haven't we? So these guys here are hidden. So this is Colonel Ramirez and a regular soldier. Right, where can we move you? Let's move you into the trees here to start with. Uh, what about these guys here now? What can you do? You can fire at the tank. Now, you're reasonably well protected there, I think. And you can see up here in the very top right, the icons change to tell you what sort of the environment is in that hex. 
So you've got an idea of the cover that you've got. So I've got reasonable cover there, I think. And again, the problem here is that this guy is well covered too. Sniper. That's what that symbol means. Oh, you, you'll be a pain, won't you? Can I dislodge you? Nope. And again. Oh, excellent. He's broken, so he shouldn't, he won't be playing next time round. And, yep. Yeah, this guy has got movement to here. Now, the thing is, as we saw... Mm -hmm. What happens is, if uh, your units are fired upon, if there's a stack of them, if there's two or three within a hex and it's fired upon, then they can all suffer. So they might all get killed or broken or pinned down. But if you move your units in smaller groups, like one or two at a time, then there's more chance that some of your troops may make it through <laughs> the battle. Uh, so we've got four people who've got a leader and two regular units. Uh, again, we can't really move here. Just leave one behind. Can I move you in here? Oh, excellent. Nobody saw us. This regular chappy here can move up to there. He'll crawl up. And what have we got here? The bazooka. Again, you can't fire at anything. And we'll move the bazooka and one regular up here. We'll crawl up there. Oh, we can fire at the tank. We can also fire here. Okay, let's try that. Nope, that didn't work terribly well either. Who else have we got here? All right, so we've, ooh, we've got an armoured vehicle here. You can fire on that. I can. Now, you're not actually in anyone's line of sight by the look of it, apart from any hidden units that might be here. So can I move you up here? I could fire at that. I could fire at the sniper. What's a PSK? What's a parachuter with a PSK? Whatever a PSK is. Let's fire at uh, the high explosive. Yeah, let's do that. Nope, that didn't work terribly well. Okay, we've got people here. You're going to be in line of sight, aren't you, here? So can we move Sergeant and and the two green troops into this here? We are in line of sight apparently. And you missed, whoever you are. Interesting they didn't fire on the uh, on the armoured vehicle there. We'll leave that chappy there for the time being. Actually we'll crawl in there. Who else have I got? Uh, I haven't yet found a next unit or next uh, squad icon or, or key. What are you doing? Oh, we could move you up. Do I want to move you up? Oh, we've got tanks and stuff in the back here. Oh, this is quite good. Move you up here. I don't know what it did then. <laughs> yep, there's a manual. I should have read it. I know. Uh, we'll move the, actually, this uh, M10 up to here. We'll move you up there. And this one, another M10, will bring you up. That's it. Leave the engine running. Oh, it's quite a convoluted route. <laughs> oh, because you can't travel through that terrain. Can you fire at anything? No, I don't think you've got anything within range. Okay, is there anything else? Of oh, let's bring these guys up. Uh, yeah, you have to come along. Actually, we'll bring these front guys along this way. No, I should have right clicked instead of left. Yeah. Oh, 
these are M4As. And we'll send you up here. You can come along here. We do have smoke in the game. Uh, not entirely sure what difference it makes. I'm sure it does make some. We'll put you there. Right, I think I am ready. Oh, now these are entry points for German reinforcements. That's rather annoying. Now, in terms of victory here, what we need to do is capture certain locations or exit uh, through a certain point, bypassing the German or opposing forces. And you can see exactly what you're supposed to do here on the uh, victory trophy icon. So my victory goal is to capture that one location, which is the one here with the German cross on it, or whatever your, the national symbol is of the opposing force. And we have to do it within 10 turns. So this counter, which is currently 100, will reduce by 10 every turn. And once it gets to zero, and we've not captured it, then we have failed this mission. So we need to capture that, and we also need to be at least 1.2 times as strong as the opposing force. Now at the moment, uh, we are 3.7 of their times their, their, their force in terms of number and strength. Now at some point, the Germans will likely reinforce and attempt to regain this uh, this victory goal here. So we need to get this job done and maintain as many living and, <laughs> and available troops or vehicles on the map as we can. Now we've gone through our move and fire phase. Now we'll go through the next phase which is the fire phase by the opposition. Now they could fire if any of our units moved within their line of sight. So, oh, there's something big over there. It looks like artillery. Or some big tank. Alright, I'm assuming that means they're strengthened. They're resolved. Oh, we're doing quite well. We're not losing anybody as yet, apart from that first kill earlier in the, earlier in the game. Now, then we hit an escape phase, at which point any of the broken units will attempt to escape to somewhere slightly safer. Like our man here with the machine gun uh, ran away from here into the woods and the broken sniper that we had earlier here has moved to a different level of the building. Buildings do have multiple levels. You can see this here and we can take them down a level if we wish to see where the guys are. Although the they will actually the hex color will actually tell you what level they're on as well which we may see as we go through now the next phase is the advanced phase where we can move one square or one tile f closer uh, and we don't i can't remember do we get hit we might get fired on on this now there's a minus there what does that mean not entirely sure uh, we could move you to there now, the advanced phase is useful to you where you're very close to the enemy and you want to get involved in a, uh, in the same tile, a melee uh, confrontation. Or if you want to get right up close to surround an enemy unit to force them to surrender. Uh, so basically, if, if they've got nowhere to run, they will surrender. Uh, you uh, could move into the grain here or back there. You, I want to move. Ah, uh, you're going to be in line of sight of that, aren't you? I think. I think the grain does give us cover. So could we move into that? Okay, and you move into the grain there. Okay, uh, you guys can move up. Uh, you stay where you are. Uh, this uh, unit. You can't. Oh, you've run out of uh, moves. That's okay. You've got the red on you. I'll leave you there. These guys. Can you go into the field? Yeah. And 
you into the field. We'll leave these guys here behind the the wall for protection. I shall move you up as well. Uh, these units here, we could put you into that trench, into the river there. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. It could be actually. Can they see this? I don't think they can from that position. No, that looks dark, doesn't it? Okay, let's let's try this. Let's put those guys in there. So they're sort of below eye level. And we'll move you into the building. And you guys can all move in there as well. All the tanks have run out of movement points. Okay, so that's the advanced phase. And the next phase is recovery. Which is where rat broken... Uh, troops will attempt to recover their resolve. Oh, sorry, it's the melee phase rather. So if there are units, if you move a unit into well, then the recovery phase. Yeah, so the melee phase is if you advance into the same hex as another enemy unit then you'll have a melee phase and that will be resolved for as long as those two units are in the same square same hex uh, the recovery phase is where units attempt to recover their resolve. Now that can be helpful if you've got a leader in the same tile. Leaders sort of encourage troops uh, to recover. And, ooh, the enemy was moving. I tried to fire on them. Didn't do so well. Missed again. So this is the enemy's move and fire phase. Oh, they're trying to move behind that those buildings. Very, very intelligent move. Oh, I was firing at someone then as well, by the look of it. Oh, my mortar's reloaded. Oh, and fired at the Germans, by the look of it. Who's coming down here? Ah. We're do doing some, some damage. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Their tank and machine gun isn't doing any good. <laughs> Basically, as badly as mine did. Now, during that recovery phase, you may have seen it come up with the word failed, which basically meant that unit is still broken. So they have no use to us. They can't do anything in this next phase. I've got a fire phase, so can I fire on anybody? I can fire on this uh, unit here. So we might as well try that. And we're firing high explosive. Nope, didn't do me any good. Uh, you've got a mortar. Uh, sorry, bazooka. Can you fire at that tank? Nope. The one thing I'm not seeing in this game, I think, is destructible terrain. Uh, you, see, you see sort of effects when you fire. But they don't, they're not persistent, to my, in my knowledge. Uh, you, oh, you can fire on that unit. Should we do that? Might as well. Again, I'm not paying any attention, <laughs> I'm afraid, to my ammo. Uh, okay, we could. There's nobody there we can fire at. There's little chance of doing any damage, so we'll leave that as is, I think. Uh, you guys... No, you can't fire at anybody. You can't. You're broken. What about you? No, this tank. Ooh! I can turn my turret to you. And I still can't fire at you because probably you're in the woods, I think. I may be entirely wrong. You can't fire at anybody either. We're not doing anything. I think we're out of actions. Oh, we could fire at that machine gun. Can you do this? No, you can't. This machine, this unit here though can fire there. Let's try that. Oh, we're pinned down. Uh, the other benefit of having a leader within a squad is it improves their accuracy and their movement points. So it's all, so you've, you've got to weigh that up whether uh, you're putting a squad in the line of fire 
and risk losing all of them or if you put a leader in there and gain the movement and f accuracy bonuses we'll put you on there as well missed no difference at all uh, can you you can't fire anything okay and i am turn the turret no you can't fire at that either nope okay so that's the fire phase so the escape phase for the enemy oh and us <laughs> so we're running away he's still rooted and that sniper's moved into that building interesting choice they've got their advance phase which is moving if they can one hex closer or one hex somewhere else There's nothing, no melee uh, recovery. That sniper didn't recover. It looks like my guy here is in recovery. Okay, now my move and fire phase again. So what can this guy do? You can fire at that unit there. Okay, so this is going to be the high explosive. Still does nothing. Okay, we'll fire our machine gun at these this guy here. We've missed, which is rather annoying. This team here, with their bazooka, you can fire at that location there. Actually, can we? I want to move up here, so we'll crawl up there. Ah, now you see here. You. There is something in here. Is it that unit there which is firing? I don't know. Ah, what's that? Oh, that looks like a mortar or something. Yeah. You must have a really good range finder. Right, yes, this, uh, this hex colour here tells you which level of the, of the building they're in. As if I uh, just deselect, uh, if I select that unit. Yeah, you can see they're orange. They've got red on them because they're within firing range. But the orange colour suggests they're on the first floor of that building. Yeah, as opposed to the ground floor or a second floor or even a third floor. No, you can only have three floors. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, so what am I doing? These guys. Uh, you can fire here, which is the bazooka. No, oh no, he's turned them though that person into a hero. Which means you can't kill them immediately or break them. I think there are rules about heroes. Should we actually look at this up in the help? The on in-game help. Uh, it does tell you about the infantry. Yeah, the ranking, the quality, the morale, movement, hero bonus, and so on. And the, the manual gives you all the details about what all these things actually mean and the effect on your choices, the weapons, the fire. So it gives you a lot of information here within the in-game help. On the assumption you know how to interpret that information, <laughs> which, which, yeah, I, I, I don't. Now, I've got a mortar here, so we could fire that. Aiming 58, a 1% chance of injuring them. Yeah, heroes are less, it's either they're not broken or not killed, they're wounded instead, and they can sustain a number of wounds before they're taken off the field entirely. So we're reloading that. Boom. Ah, uh, no. Because they managed to reload it within the time, I think that's what this symbol here, the 50% in the bottom right corner there, is the reload chance within the firing phase. So we'll try again. Probably not good firing a mortar at, uh, at a building, to be honest, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit silly like that. I uh, could fire here at the tank or at this sniper. I could crawl that way. Yeah, the tank noticed me, but yeah, because I'm undercover, I'm more protected. Okay, let's try the tank. 
nope, still not doing it. Uh, this unit here, you can crawl there. Oh no! No! I've lost them. They're broken. Bother! Have I? I mean, I've not done much damage to anybody. Okay, right, so what we'll do here, I mean, this video is going to be very, quite long, or well, quite long. Um, so I'm not going to run this all the way through. This this could take this could take me hours to complete this scenario because as you can see, I'm I'm not a fast player of these sort of games. So rather than have you wait around till I've completed it, uh, I'm, if I do complete it, I might tack that on the end of the video. But what I'll say is thank you for joining me for this first look at Second Front, which again released. Oh, wounded them. Good. Good. Wounded and broken. I really do wish I knew what that minus symbol there meant. <laughs> Maybe they're not as good as they as they could be. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so thank you once again for joining me for this first look at Second Front. And th again, thanks to Micropros, Micropros for offering me a key to the game. If you've enjoyed this, then please let me know. A like would be lovely. Just click on the old thumbs yuppie button. Even better, if you've got anything you feel like saying about the game, uh, then please let me know. Just drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. I can fire at you or the tank. Or particularly, if you'd like to see more of this on the channel. It's not the usual sort of game I put on the channel, but if it's of interest to you and you think I might produce entertaining <laughs> videos on this, then please do just uh, let me know. Uh, by wrote, writing an appropriate note in the comments box below. Other than that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. Well, that goes. Missed them. Oh, well, never mind. I can't move now because I've fired. Uh, oh, well, what about you guys? Uh, can you crawl up here? Yeah. And you can fire on that guy. Yep, if you've not already subscribed, then you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload any of my other Let's Play series. Or indeed any more of Second Front. If you want to see more of this, then please do let me know. But anyway, from me, Ajax Post, here in Second Front. Until the next time, bye bye for now.